Good morning. Today we will be talking about tribal early Head Start programs and efforts to revitalize native language within individual tribes. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Joanna Parker. I am a senior writer training specialist with the Early Head Start National Resource Center at Zero to Three. I am very excited to be meeting with you today. This is a topic which I feel passionate about. Language and culture cannot be separated. Efforts to revitalize language is really about maintaining and strengthening culture. Let's start with some logistical information. It is my hope that this session will be as interactive as possible. There is a discussion link at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Click on the circle with a picture of a speech bubble. Feel free to type questions or comments during the presentation. Because there are many of us on the line, make sure that your phone or the microphone on your computer is muted. Before we begin, I would like to get a sense of who is here. Please click on the link on your screen for the poll. I will give you a few moments to identify yourself so we can see who is in the audience. I'm very excited to see that we have such a nice mix of participants for this webinar today. I'm curious to see who falls under the category of other. If you did not see your role listed and clicked on Other to identify yourself, could you type in the discussion box what your role is? Again, welcome. Let's get started. It is important to begin our conversation with what it is that we want for all children. Early Head Start programs are committed to supporting positive outcomes for all young children. This is often talked about as school readiness. What does school readiness mean for infants and toddlers? School readiness for infants and toddlers is about the foundational skills that lead to re readiness. These include skills such as attention, memory, curiosity, problem solving, and the ability to be in a relationship. School readiness is not about teaching very young children the skills that we expect or want for older children. It is about building a solid foundation. Ron Lally, a leader in infant-toddler development and early care and education, talks about school readiness for infants and toddlers. He states, new discoveries in neuroscience suggest that school readiness interventions might come too late if they start after the child is three years old. Many of the skills needed to succeed in school are shaped during a baby's interactions with his or her caregivers. Social interactions during the first two years of life provide the foundation for learning. When thinking about what it is that we want for infants and toddlers, it is important to remember that all development occurs within the context of relationships. We must engage the families of very young children. Research shows that when we authentically engage with families around their role as a family, as parents, we are strengthening the family. By strengthening the family, we strengthen the child. Parents and other significant family members are children's first and most important educator and caregiver. Remember the role of the extended family and community in raising children. The Parent, Family, and Community Engagement Framework from the Head Start National Center on Parent, Family, and Community Engagement provides us with a framework to think about how we can do this work. The seven family outcomes support early Head Start programs in thinking about how we can truly engage with and support the family. The outcomes are listed in order. Family well-being comes first. This looks at issues of financial, mental, and physical health. It is challenging for a parent to focus on the quality of his interactions with his baby if he is not sure of where the family will sleep or where the next meal will come from. Families as advocates and leaders is the most complex and requires that many skills and supports are in place for that family. Working with families and supporting the development of very young children as members of a family and community we must engage in a way which is culturally responsive. Cultural responsivity requires that early Head Start staff are aware of their own cultural beliefs, values, and traditions. Remember that culture does not only refer to race, ethnicity, religion, and language. Each family has their own culture in terms of their priorities, hopes, and dreams for their child. Early Head Start staff need to take the time to learn about and respect the family's priorities for their child. The process of ask, acknowledge, and adapt requires that we need to first ask a parent or family member about what their priorities and values are. We must seek to understand and acknowledge the perspective of the family, even if it is different than what we believe or feel is most important for the child. We must then seek to make adaptations 
to match how we are with the baby, with what the family or community values. The multicultural principles for Head Start programs serving children ages birth to five provides a framework for thinking about cultural responsiveness. The multicultural principles are, principle one, every child is rooted in culture. Principle two, the cultural groups represented in the communities and families of each Head Start program are the primary sources for culturally relevant programming. Principle three, Culturally relevant and diverse programming requires learning accurate information about the cultures of different groups and discarding stereotypes. Principle four, addressing cultural relevance and making curriculum choices and adaptations is a necessary developmentally appropriate practice. Principle five, every individual has the right to maintain his or her own identity while acquiring the skills required to function in our diverse society. Principle six, Effective programs for children who speak languages other than English require continued development of the first language while the acquisition of English is facilitated. Principle 7. Culturally relevant programming requires staff who both reflect and are responsive to the community and families served. Principle 8. Multicultural programming for children enables children to develop an awareness of, respect for, and appreciation of individual cultural differences. Principle nine, culturally relevant and diverse programming examines and challenges institutional and personal biases. Principle 10, culturally relevant and diverse programming and practices are incorporated in, the, in all systems and services and are beneficial to all adults and children. A child's development is greatly influenced by the culture with which in the child lives. The Office of Head Start convenes tribal consultation sessions as required by the Head Start Act and in conformity with the Department of Health and Human Services tribal consultation policy. The consultations provide a forum for discussing how to better meet the needs of American Indian and Alaskan Native children and families. Tribal consultation reports reflect comments and recommendations raised by tribal leaders and their representatives, comments and responses from the Office of Head Start, and areas identified at the tribal consultations as requiring a follow-up by the Office of Head Start. The priorities listed on the slide are summarized from the tribal consultation sessions that occurred in 2013. Sessions occurred in Albuquerque, New Mexico on March 19, Spokane, Washington on June 11, and Tulsa, Oklahoma on July 26. A common theme from all three sessions was concerns around preservation of language and culture. This video is from the website www.theways.org. The website houses an ongoing series of stories on culture and language from native communities around the Great Central Lakes. Cousins, and I have my brothers, you know, that's the way we say it in our language, you name know, with our friends, you know, close friends. We do things in, in a good mind and a good heart and a good way, and when we need that help, I guess we believe it will come to us. Too. What I'm doing is ensuring that the language goes a generation beyond myself, and I'm going to do that through my kids, you know. I'm teaching Mimikwa the language using natural immersion. Natural immersion as you just talk about your day the way you would anything else. Only it's being done in Menominee. I decided to stay home and teach her the language because it's a my last unique opportunity to be able to raise a first language fluent speaker. I think it's hard for her to, to want to speak because nobody else does, you know. There's probably about eight people that speak. We'll call it ten. You got ten of ten thousand. What's that percent? Point zero zero one. Zero zero one percent. So that's a a reality check. 
the language it could die, but the idea that we're trying to preserve is a living language. The Mokdashimith, it lives. Every little thing is gonna be alright for me and you. Don't you worry about a thing. Every little thing is gonna be alright. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Hey, come in the mark. So there's words readily available for everything in nature. The word for falling snow, petting on. The word for snow on the ground is cone, crusted snow, wana, wana. And the word snowflake is even different yet than both of them. They uh, pay weights it. The beautiful thing is it's that much easier in, in the woods, you know, because our language is really based on what, what's going on out there. But how do we make that transition into today's life too, you know, because we're not always sugaring, we're not always ricing. Spend a lot of days at home, in the office, on the road. We got to learn to express those things too. The language has to make that transition if it's going to be relevant and if it's going to survive. You know. When I was young, my first main teacher was she went. She was starting to get sick and forgetful, you know. One day we were just sitting at her house talking. And she tells me. Now I can die wild. for 25 years, she said, try to teach someone this language. Now today I've done that. Then she continued on in Menominee, you know, she said, I'm a pachy kitchen and he went to Sawi and me pay you know, to put me to you know, to keep it to it. Only need that. That one and you know, maybe you're gonna be an old man to hear these kids talking our language. Said, I love you. Don't give up. Think about what are the priorities of this father. Think about how his beliefs and values are demonstrated through the choices he has made for his child. This is a powerful video that helps us remember the importance and value of language. Culture and language cannot be separated. Efforts that many tribes are engaged in to revitalize their language is about maintaining and strengthening the culture of the tribe. Think about the messages which many native communities receive about the value of their own identity when their language and culture is not honored. This slide lists specific concerns raised by participants at the three tribal consultation sessions which occurred in 2013. Our conversation around cultural responsivity and the multicultural principles provide us with some strategies to respond to these concerns. Early Head Start programs work within the community in which they are located as a member of that community. The Office of Head Start has provided recommendations for Early Head Start programs to support language revitalization. These recommendations are summarized in the Office of Head Start Tribal Language Report published in 2012. The Early Head Start National Resource Center Technical Assistance Paper No. 12, Honoring Cultural Traditions, provides a brief overview of the issues and unique to early Head Start programs working in American Indian and Alaskan Native communities 
and highlights the features of several programs working with American Indian and Alaska Native families across the country. Revitalizing language and culture in early childhood settings is one of the issues discussed. This presentation has been recorded and posted to a live binder online. Live Binders is like an online binder. You will be able to watch the presentation as well as find all of the different resources referenced by following the link posted on this slide. I hope that you take the time to go to the Live Binder and see the different resources and materials there for you. In ending, uh, if anyone has any questions, please post questions in the discussion link and we could discuss them further. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.